Hi, everybody. Uh, people are here already waiting, waiting excitedly for our Mika Fan Club Instagram Live special edition. Um, I'm glad to see so many people here already. Um, I am, hi Daisy, hi Carlotta, hi Gaia, hi Silva, oh my, hi Sarah, lots of people here from Italy already, welcome, hi Melissa, Melissa from China, hi, and there is Cynthia, hello Cynthia, there's Belen, hi, Inky's here, oh, the old, old gang is all here, great to see you all. Um, let's see, I'm waiting for our special guest, I don't see, oh, this thing, okay, let's see. Yeah, no, nothing yet. We're waiting, I know he's here somewhere lurking about in the uh, ethernet and uh, we'll be having Mika pop in pretty soon, I hope, and everything going according to plan, um, we will uh, have a chance to chat with him. I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous. This is kind of strange to um, think about, you know, talking to Mika like this. It's one thing to see him talking to somebody else, but it's another to think that he's gonna be right here. Um, I think, I hope anyway, he joins this pretty soon, otherwise I'm going to have to go look for him. Hi Saskia, hi Karen, hi Anna, hi Isa. Hi, Rose. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Savan. Hi, Corinne. There he is. There's Mika. Okay, Mika, I'm going to try to do this. Okay. It says we're connecting. Everybody says they have many questions. They're ready, ready to ask. Uh, Hi. Oh, there he is. He's there. Hi. Hey. Oh, wow. You're looking very... Suntanned. I'm looking. I'm looking very sunburnt. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello. Nice, nice shelves behind you, by the way. Oh yeah. I so thought that I'm, might be disconcerting for you to see yourself <laughs> staring back. No, no, it's okay. So I'm going to show you. I'm on a terrace. It's kind of there's the laundry. <laughs> the laundry. Um, and we just we're having a glass of wine. Oh, nice, nice. And oh. some popcorn. I'm having coffee. Oh, okay. Well, what time is it for you? It's it's only 12.30, so it's a little early for me to start drinking. No, I would agree with you. <laughs> Although, but now look, so we've, we've brought all these back to life. I've been here now what, for almost five weeks, and we've got some dill. We've got basil and peppermint and rosemary and um, marjoram and gardenia and, uh, yeah. Gardenias are wonderful. Oh, yeah, and, and Deb, nothing's dying. <laughs> Well, look at your weather. You have wonderful weather there. Well, it's gotten good. It has. And I'm, I'm really grateful for this, for this terrace, for this little balcony. Uh, and it's ironic because, you know, I got to tell you, obviously, I live between lots of different places and I have gardens and I've never been able to have enough time to spend on them. And the one place that I'm relishing more than anywhere is this, this tiny little strip of balcony where I see neighbors getting naked in the house opposite and fighting and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and throwing their cats out the window because that seems to be something that one of my neighbors likes to do every evening yeah. uh, but it's it's a it's a surreal thing on the one hand um you know it's it's extremely upsetting because it's 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 affecting all of us and even economically it's affecting so many of us right and on the other hand it's like it's like the world's just kind of kind of being given a, a an opportunity to somewhat to, to reset. reset. Exactly. I've said the same thing. It's like when you look at what's happening in places like Venice where the air and the water are suddenly crystal clear and there's yeah. no people around and um then you look at how families are reconnecting and 
it is. It's almost like telling us we needed it to reset. I, I wish it wasn't quite in this way, but. And, but even economically, I mean, uh, I think so many of our habits are, and our, our travel habits, our spending habits, our borrowing habits, um, and uh, have just been so overstretched. And, and, I, and that I speak for me, for five friends of mine, for my family members. I mean, I see it. And it's just like this, it's like, wow, God, that's a, well, it's only once you get off the roller coaster that you realize that you've been, I wouldn't even say in a roller coaster, more like in a washing machine. Mm, right. I, I totally agree. I, it's, it's been interesting. I mean, I work from home all the time. So this is not a real big change for me, but my husband has been um, the last few years, especially traveling around the world, um, probably rivaling you. I mean, he has literally gone, you know, circumnavigated the globe. What does he do? He uh, does marketing for a software company. Okay. And, uh, so they have clients all over the place. So he's been everywhere from, you know, Vietnam to Colombia to everywhere. And okay. now he's confined to his little office upstairs at home and doing everything via video chat like this. Wow. And he, it's a huge difference for him. Okay. Um, and so just, I have a really important question. Yes. Does he wear trousers? <laughs> he does, but he's got, he's got two modes actually. He calls them hard pants and soft pants. Soft hard pants? pants. Soft pants are sweatpants, and yeah. hard pants are, you know, just jeans or regular pants. And I said, that's okay. fine, as long as you don't go to no pants mode. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be fine. It's so. a matter of time. Prepare yourself. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. no, he's, he's still, he still at least has pants on. Okay, good. I hope all of you watching this at home have pants on. <laughs> yes, and definitely. pants in the UK means underwear. Well, I hope you've got that on too. Well, even if you don't, I don't, I don't mind actually. You don't even know if I have trousers on. That's true. Really. So I think just for two seconds, if you allow me, um, I'm going to speak a little bit in French. Salut à tout le monde qui est en train de regarder en France. Um, évidemment, moi je vais parler en anglais parce que cette conversation, eh ben, elle va être en anglais surtout. Mais, mais à un certain moment, je vais vous saluer, évidemment. Ciao a tutti italiani qui stanno guardando in questo momento. È un piacere di, di rivedervi attraverso questo Instagram Live. Però non è il mio, è quello di DC Deb um, <ride> e quello del, del Mica Fan Club. Dunque, uh, parliamo soprattutto in inglese in questo momento. Ok, over yeah. to you. I'm all well, yours. No, what, can I, what can I do for you? Well, everybody, as I've, as I've been doing these, this is my fourth one. Wow, I'm such a pro now. Um, they want, you know, multiple languages, and I'm just not, I speak a little bit of Italian. I think you do a lot. I what? think you do a lot for this fan club, and I think you do a lot from, for, for my music, for me, and for this community that's been built. And so we can forgive totally the <laughs> fact that you're not going to do it in 17 <laughs> languages. Yeah, no, so... So I was thinking it's been seven months to the day since the last time I saw you. Um, and where was that? It was in Montreal. It oh, was yeah. the, the Tiny Love Tiny Tour. Okay. And yeah, just, you know, what an amazing seven months. I mean, in some ways it seems like it hasn't been that long, but in some ways it feels like a lifetime. Mm. Um, it's true. It's, it's gone by really quickly. I mean, and uh, what's made it uh, seem... Uh, so so short is that we haven't had that that the the regular steps the regular progressions that you get in a, in an album campaign and in a tour campaign um things like you know the the show you saw the 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 setup shows in north america which went crazy well and then you saw the big show the the zeniths and the arenas in europe but then the new shows in america some of them were going to be five, four times as big? I mean, the, the, you saw me in Montreal seven months ago, and that was how many people? Oh. In that not, 600? It was really, a, that, that theater was very, was called the Corona Theater, I think, right? Yeah, 600. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the show that we were supposed to be playing pretty soon now in Montreal? Do you know how many tickets we had sold up until Corona? I know it was big, you know. Uh, big. I mean, we were, we were basically going to, we were going to play it at around 11,000 people. 
Wow. And that's just Montreal. And some, I mean, look at those venues in Atlanta, in Denver, the Fillmore in Miami. I mean, you know, that's where my uh, Madonna played last time she was there. And there's, I mean, just dream yeah. uh, venues with real historic kind of musical soul to them. And so it's really, I think the fact that we haven't seen the progression and it's been interrupted in this tour and that Asia got interrupted and South Korea and China um, and the festival season. Yeah. Guys, let's face it. The festival season this year is gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, and, and that is horrible. I mean, that in this market, you know, that is our, that is what we aim for mm -hmm. today. Nowadays as musicians, it's gone. And weirdly, Instead of lamenting it, I think that the, the one thing I'll say is that it's immediately making me look at 2021 and 2022, which if you had asked me five weeks ago, seemed really far away, but now it seems really soon. Mm -hmm. And if that is the only good thing that will come out of that is that the artistic progression, which can often be kind of... Uh, the breaks can be put on when you're on a, a long touring campaign because that's really what things are now. It's touring campaigns more than album campaigns. Uh, that, those breaks have been taken off now. And so the artistic progression by 2021, we're going to move artistically a lot more forward than we would have if I was still going to do all these shows that I was supposed to do up until September. So there is an advantage, I promise. There's a silver lining, at least as far as me and and my work and, and the stuff that you guys are going to get out of this, there will be a plus side. Well, that's um, a lot of people were asking me to, to ask you exactly that. Like, what do you think the best thing that's come out of this has been? And then also, where do you see or how do you see it affecting 2021? I know it's too soon to, to say oh, this is going to be rescheduled or that will be... Oh, you know, because we have no idea. I mean, yeah. and any, any artist that is t uh, right now telling you, well, this is going to happen then and whatever, is, is just is, is full of shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's, it, it, they really shouldn't be doing that. I mean, when William Morris, who are my agents in America and North America and Asia, they were like, look, whatever you do, don't say postponed and announced dates. They were like, this is really serious. Do right. other artists are not listening to us but you listen to us, please. We're trying to convince everyone just to say, for now, it's not happening. We'll mm -hmm. see. Um, so as far as shows are concerned, we just don't know. We don't know uh, how the lockdown is going to happen, just like all of you. I mean, it's, we're all affected in exactly the same way, and it's not a priority right now. Right. So even, even some artists, like in Italy, who are lambasting the government for guidelines for the summer season, Sorry, but we just don't know now. No one knows. Right. I mean, it's so do, don't blame anyone. It's just, we just don't know. Right. Um, but as far as me, what's happened uh, is that, okay, I think the best way to describe it, because it's still a little bit abstract, because let's that's, that's not assume that we've been through the end of this yet, because I think we're at the beginning of this, if I had to be honest with you. Um, what one thing that has happened is this, decompression of my brain um and that's made good stuff kind of make me feel good in some ways and also made me realize other things that are less good that have been swept under the the the, the schedule carpet as i like to call it mm -hmm. um the good thing is that uh this decompression of my brain from a creative point of view and from a thinking point of view is something that hasn't happened to me since I was at university, since I was at college. Mm. And so in, inevitably there will be uh, synapses within my brain and my creative brain that will be reconnected as a result of chase to happen, uh, as not chasing after the next or the pressure of the now. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing from right. a creative point of view. Um, and uh, and so, so different concepts are things that I'm looking to develop. Um, I think, ironically, I realized also that if I have to be frank with myself, I'm an artist who's always 
like I have the impression that you know I I don't fit the norm. I know that I don't. I can tell you from a business point of view, I don't. I can tell you even from the contracts I have with the people that work with me, I'm atypical. I don't fit regular processes, and I don't fit the regular radio thing. But in that in in that challenge. Uh, in all my idiosyncrasies that can be seen as negatives from a purely commercial point of view, actually, that's I've realized now that that's a huge strength that I'm used to kind of fighting for what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm used to figuring it out. I'm used to rolling up my sleeve and getting shit done. <laughs> you know, I'm used to kind of like going, okay, oh, I feel like doing a TV show in Italy that's going to be kind of whimsical and romantic and and Mickey Mouse is going to show up and Kylie Minogue and Sting and all these amazing Italian artists and I'm going to write it and I'm going to do it with people who have never really worked with or who have never made a show like this but we're going to kind of like I, I was always like oh god I wish I could just be like someone else I wish I could just go into a studio and take the song that this songwriter's written and sing it and make it a hit and, and now I realize I don't I'm really fucking grateful that I'm not that guy I'm really happy that uh, that that kind of like kind of slightly crazy survival and 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 kind of going against the grain process is is really going to help me through the next few years because I think that's what we're talking about as we're aiming for this kind of reset of things that's going to happen all around us. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, that was something else somebody asked uh, about was just how this is going to change live music in, in general, because there's not going to be for a while anyway, um, the, you know, people aren't going to want to do the big arena shows and people on top of each other and dancing in the mosh pit and stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, so live music will necessarily change. I think, you know, as far as doing more streaming, maybe more, I don't know, more of this kind of thing. I, I don't know, but Sure, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And no. let's not pretend that it's the same. I mean, you know, it's, it, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm a, I, I, me seeing an artist that I adore singing a song in his pajamas at home might be a fun novelty, but it is not the same. No. And, I, and, and there's a certain part of me that just doesn't want to see it. It's, I'll, I'll see it once or twice, but then after that, I'm like, oh, like, you know, if if I ever saw David Bowie doing that, I'd freak out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry, but I'd freak out. Okay, the amount of detail, of work, of impromptu things that happen when a team of dedicated people put on a show for you to watch with the lights, with the 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 the, the set, with the, the costume or whatever, the, the clothes, with the the movements, with all of that magic. Mm -hmm. That is a very specific thing. It is. I, I totally we, agree. I mean, it's the we, same live theater. It's yeah, exactly. Seeing it but right there. We were we were already seeing a trend, a massive trend uh, across the live industry, but also um, in my shows and in my sales, where we noticed that people were a lot more likely to buy a seated ticket than a standing ticket, even though the seated tickets are more expensive and uh, you're further away. But it doesn't matter because I think there's this kind of, there, there was a general trend in purchasing of tickets. So I think the first thing you're gonna see on, let's talk real consequences, you're gonna see a lot more seated shows. Hmm. And even the concept of, and a lot better organized shows, the process of entry, hmm. the, uh, the access, to facilities, the space in the corridors, all of that's gonna to have to be re re rethought of. But in terms of uh, will people be willing to go and see shows? I mean, you'd be quite amazed. I think the, the minute that there's a concrete solution and, and by that, I mean something like a vaccine or something uh, mm -hmm. for what we're going through. I think that's gonna be, um, that's you, people will bounce back to going to see shows because they, 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 they want it, they need it. I mean, I, I wanna go see shows, I wanna go to the theater. You know, I want to go see an amazing exhibit that's, you know, maybe the exhibits will be a little less rammed full of people and I'll have to buy my tickets in advance. Maybe the concerts will have more seats in them and less of a marsh pit, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Right. Yeah, I saw something on the news. I think they were talking about the Indy 500 or something and it's like 250,000 people 
that go to see it. And they, they were like, will that, will that ever happen again? Will they ever have 250,000 people, you know, a quarter of a million people crammed into a space at all, or I don't know what the number was, maybe it wasn't that much, but still it, you know, it's hard to imagine us coming out of this and wanting to go back to exactly that same thing. What, what it won't. It, it, it won't be exactly that same thing. You're right. That's that's it. But we're going to go back to it. But it's yeah. not going to be the same thing. Right. I mean, and and but these are luxury problems. I mean, these. Yeah. I'm, I'm more worried about whether you know, like whether people will, you know, what, what about jobs? Mm -hmm. You know, oh yeah. It, let's let's not talk about the show. Let's talk about whether people will have the money to even buy the show. Not for my sake, but I'm just saying in generally jobs. Right. You know, it, it, this you realize the 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 sometimes the economic implications and the social implications of something like this in the United States or in the UK. It's not as visible in those countries as it is in somewhere like India. Right. Look at the imagery of of migrant workers in, in swathes and groups of hundreds of thousands right. trying to flee, going to the station. I mean, it's just the astonishing images. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that, you know, it's brought up issues, so many issues up to the surface. Those are the things we need to focus on right now. It's true. And, th and there is just, like you started to say, like a cascading effect, you know, that, if people have to stay at home, that means they can't work. If they can't work, they don't have money. If they don't have money, they can't buy things. If they can't buy things, people don't need to make things, you know, and it, it just, it, it's, when you start to think that way, it gets a little overwhelming. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, I mean, just the, the consequences of this is so, hyster I mean, not hysterical, but so strange. It's like, strange. you know, that, 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 that there's, um, there's now they're holding oil because they don't want to sell oil. Right. Uh, even oil that's already been pumped out, they don't want to sell it. So where do they put it? Right. So <laughs> there are ships. There are many ships right now, oil tankers that are earning a lot of money because they've been uh, chartered on a daily basis for over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day just to sit offshore. Right. holding oil for when the market will be better. We live in a pretty crazy world. Sometimes we don't even realize how crazy it is. That's for sure. And we don't realize, you know, how lucky we are sometimes. Exactly. And, and how to make sense of all this madness. Um, I think by knowing what makes you happy, by, uh, by having um, contact with those people and those things that make you happy, mm -hmm. um, and also by having good music and good art and good literature, because it's only the, the you know, art, art, is this amazing thing that makes sense of chaos and beauty to me is the most is the one rule that we should all adhere to because beauty is it gives order to everything even in the most crazy confusing thing just follow the line of beauty mm -hmm. and, and and it's it might sound pretentious but i don't mean it in a pretentious way because in in every type of music there is beauty from uh stravinsky to uh death metal uh, from and every type of literature and every type of writing, even from journalism to, uh, to, 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 to Dickens, there's beauty. There's this one thing. And so uh, I think that if anything, now all of this has made us realize how precious those things are. Right. The, I, and um, I think a lot of the, the beauty that you're talking about comes from the idea that we're creating it and we're, it's, it's something that's part of us and we are yes to, you know express ourselves in some way even if it is you know not a painting but you know in my case maybe it's like writing a, an article but yes. it's it's still a, a a mode of expression that uh I, I i read something the other day that talked about the questions you should ask yourself every day while you're in quarantine and one of them was, what beauty am I creating today? What I, I love that. Am I inviting in? You know, right. if I'm not creating it, what am I inviting in? But this, this, this bit make also one thing clear. It's not about everyone has to go and write or right. everyone has to go and, 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 and write an article or write a song or, uh, you know, that's not what it's about at all. Um, it's more about like, you know, even just 
it, it, it can be found in many different places. Just recognizing beauty is, is, is good enough. Right. Because there's also the downside of this. I've, I've really noticed lately that there's, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure has been launched on people to kind of like, so what have you done out of your quarantine? Are you a loser? <laughs> or are you are you a, a winner like and that's just i just you know I, even when i get like i get messages from friends saying oh i've done i've done so much work i've written so much or i've i've designed some i'm like bugger off <laughs> like, don't don't wave your you know uh, don't wave your accomplishment at me. I, it's just like it's. Just, I'm just like you know. I'm trying to figure out how just to just to be at the moment, and um, and that I thought that would be easy, but that's pretty fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I've had people telling me the same kind of thing. Like you know, they organized their spice drawers and they did this and they did that, and I'm like, yeah, I got up, <laughs> I got yeah. dressed, <laughs> I got dressed. That's about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, there are lots of questions coming up on the screen. I don't know if you see them too. And people are also saying, can you translate? Can you translate? It's a lot to translate. Yeah, we might have to. Well, we have our translating team. Maybe they will be able to. Okay. Do see, that. I'm not sunburned. But You're you not see, sunburned. no, I'm not. Look, do I look sunburned? I don't. I'm, I'm, I, I am tan. Yeah, but, it makes but, me feel very white, very white. But you know what? We're still allowed to go out and run here uh, one hour a day. And so I have run every single day and I'm doing sport on FaceTime for an, another hour of that day. So I have not been as in shape as this in a long time <laughs> to the point where, I, where I'm just like, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it took being stuck in a house to get my shit together and get some better habits. <laughs> Well, that's that's one thing that people were asking uh, to ask you is, um, what's it like, you know, to be stuck in one place after you've been traveling all over? And what was was that hard? And is that the hardest part of, of all of this? Um, I think, you know, the hardest part is the same for everybody is just being apart from your family and your friends. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm you know, I, I, I am quite I know I travel a lot and stuff. but I'm quite solitary. I mean, I, I, I started really young and, 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 and often, even though it looks like you're not alone, you know, in this job, you, you're, you're often alone. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's, it's a little easier for me. Uh, um, but so I don't, you know, I've never gone to an office and stuff. And, right. And, and I just haven't just because I, 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 I always, I mean, college was when I was most, school and college was when I was most surrounded by people on a regular basis. Yeah, that drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, a lot of people wanted to know what you can t say about uh, some of the things that you were talking about before all this started, like the uh, collaboration with Dana Paula mm. and uh, the little documentaries you were doing. And, mm -hmm. and did you talk about anything like that? To okay. Collaboration with Dana Paula has started. Um, the first part of it is done. It's been done for a few weeks. I was on my way to the airport in Mexico uh, and uh, I didn't leave because I couldn't, because we got wind that there was an announcement gonna be made about the closing of the borders. And so um, we thought it was a bad idea mm -hmm. for me to go from Europe to Mexico. Uh, so that got not, it, it's just on hold but it's done and it's, it's really good. And there's other things we want to do. There's other collaborations as well in Europe, which I can't talk about yet that are also done waiting. There's this new, uh, there's material coming out. It just, it, it wouldn't be right to put it out now. And, you know, I just I don't think it would be right to put it out right now. I think okay. we need to understand where we're going right now, you know, um, and uh, and so we'll see. As far as the mini docs go, um, that uh, I have just finished one today. Ah. Uh, a lot of work. Um, I write the whole thing myself. Uh, we edit uh, in the living room here. 
Um, and what I thought would be something quite light and fun has turned into something really kind of uh, quite, quite serious. Um, and so we're going to see because the idea was that it was the first test and then we would get a partner to partner up with us. Obviously that as well is on hold, but I didn't want the creative part to stop. So the, the pilot is, is almost ready and it's beautiful. And when we can, we'll share it with you. Okay. Well, you know, everybody's always impatient and wants everything right now. Well, me too. <laughs> so uh, that's why they've been asking. Um, well, I don't know. I, I feel like um, it's really hard for everybody to stay in touch. And I think a lot of us feel isolated because we had big plans and we were making plans to get together around, you know, some of the concerts and everything. So doing something like this is awesome because it brings everybody together and they can see you and I'm reading all the comments as they're going by. And Well, let's just talk about one thing. How amazing is it that in all the years that the MFC has existed and the strength of the community that it is, yeah. we've never done anything like this. Yeah, well. That's pretty great. I mean, yeah. for me, it's pretty great. And it makes certain things that were more abstract, at least for me, feel far more real. Right. So that is definitely a, a, some, an advantage that we have to recognize, or I have to at least. So I feel very grateful um, because if I can't do the shows, at least I know that we can still do things like this. And that yeah. makes me very happy. Yeah, well, it's, it's wonderful for, you know, like you said, to have everybody together and I, as I'm seeing the names like I recognize almost all the names that are going past here and a lot of them are people that I've met in real life and that's kind of cool that we can all still be together and and do something like this so exactly. so well I really appreciate your time and thank you and I, I'm going to speak a bit in French if you if you don't mind no, alors well, salut à tout le monde I, je suis juste en train de dire je voulais vous dire que dans toutes les années qu'on avait le MFC le Mika Fan Club et aussi les autres fan clubs en France et dans les autres pays autour du monde, on n'a jamais eu la possibilité de faire ce qu'on est en train de faire maintenant. Donc, même si on est loin, on est très unis. Et, euh, et je voulais juste vous saluer et vous remercier aussi parce que ça, ça me chauffe le cœur énormément. À tous ceux qui sont en Italie, qui sont regardant maintenant, je voulais vous dire que dans tous ces années, dans tous ces divers fan clubs, et mica fan clubs, surtout, non abbiamo mai avuto l'opportunità o anche l'occasione di fare quello che stiamo facendo adesso, che vuol dire che anche noi, se noi siamo tutti separati in tutto il mondo e non possiamo andare ai concerti, guarda, siamo più uniti in una maniera che eravamo prima. E questa è una cosa molto bella. Um, saludos a todos los españoles y también los mexicanos y sudamericanos. Uh, besos and um, thank you for organizing this and I look forward to doing it again another time. Well, you know where we are now. <laughs> so, All right, I do. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll look forward to it too. Thank you so much. Thank and, you, big uh, kiss. Uh, mwah. And I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye to you. And if anybody wants to stay on and talk for a few minutes, we can do that too. So okay. right. bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye, thank you. Oh, there you go, everybody. Um, I just didn't know if anybody wanted to just talk for a minute um, or uh, maybe I should just end this right now and then we can work on getting it translated so people who, um, you know, that didn't understand maybe can get um, the gist of what Mika was saying. But uh, I think it was really great that he was able to take some time and um, have a glass of wine with us, even though I didn't have any wine right now. So um, let's see, everybody says, oh, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad that it worked out and I really thank Mika for taking the time. So um, let's see here. Um, <laughs> um, it's nice to see all of you. I recognize so many of the names and I wish I could call you all out. Um, I. Don't think, uh, we didn't ask a lot of the questions um, specifically, but I think Mika answered a lot of your questions um, just in conversation, right? Um, we heard what he was doing and we heard um, what's happening in the future and we got his thoughts on what's gonna happen uh, for him next year. And uh, I think all that was uh, 
the kind of things that you want to know about. We forgot to ask about the dogs. I know I forgot. Um, hopefully he'll be able to tell us what's going on with the dogs. I know we all like to know. Um, let's see what else anybody's saying. Everybody is. Shall I bring some people in? Do we, how much time do we have? I don't even know what time it is. Oh, we've got a few minutes. I'll bring uh, a few people in. Let's see here. Oh, who's here? Um, oh my goodness, who's here? I'll bring Jay in if she wants to talk. I'm sorry I can't get you on here, Wendy. Oh, Jesus. Me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, hi. Hi. So, uh, can you hear me? On. Good. Good. Okay. Um, did. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I know uh, you wrote somewhere that you wanted to be on the screen with Mika and I at the same time, but we don't have the <laughs> capability yet. So, you're stuck with this. <laughs> Um, that's fine. <laughs> so, so, um, did Mika answer all of the, the questions that you had for him? I don't remember, uh, if you, well, I, quickly. I don't know. I, I only wanted to know, like, if he can't order a piano online because apparently uh, he said that he really misses having a piano, but yes, I don't know, maybe a keyboard, something like that. I was going to ask and I just didn't get there. We'll have to do a follow up with him because that's all right. He 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 talks so much like <laughs> he gets just But I yeah, I just no. didn't get a chance to ask that. I forgot. I did have it written down. That's all right. <laughs> well, it was really cute though to see that like, I don't know. He felt very he seemed very relaxed and yeah, it was really nice that you did that. Like you brought him in. Well, so Yes, and he was yeah. he was drinking wine, so he should have been relaxed. So we've <laughs> done the same. Yeah, that would have helped. So okay. Oh, I see. By the way, uh, Mila is asking how my name is pronounced. Uh, so it's pronounced Yaela. That's my full name. Yaela. Yaela. Okay. And I just go by J online most of the time, so <laughs> that's how it's pronounced. Well, I'm glad that. And that yeah, I didn't know either. <laughs> yeah, I think I think most people don't know, but Dutch people don't know either. So ah. it's uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, I just yeah. Say hi since I saw you were there. I'll see if somebody else is uh, there and wants to say hi for a few minutes. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I must. Yeah, fine. Good. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Let's see here. I want to, I know this sounds terrible, but I need to find somebody that I know I can speak English to because I don't, um, I really don't think I can do any other language here. Let's see. Oh, so many of you. Um, let's do Cassia. Is it Cassia? Cassia Musa? Oh my Hi. God! <laughs> Hi, I recognize your name, so I thought I would yes. see if you it wanted to It goes with Cassia and three X's on the fan club, but it's Kasia. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so how are you doing? Ooh. And I'd like to say hi to you, Deb, and to the old, 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 old uh, Mika fans. That's and right. to Anna from Anna from uh, Poland. Yes. I'm Polish, I live in London. Thank you for this amazing conversation. Yes. And it's so great to see Mika so happy and uh, so relaxed. Yes. It's just, it's just so inspiring. He has so many wise things to say. I'm so overwhelmed. I didn't uh, even expect you to <laughs> accept my invitation. So it's, it's absolutely awesome that we're connecting with people from uh, all around the world. Yes. And we're just able to speak to each other in real time. Yes. I like, I, I like that so much. I have always enjoyed... That's one of the things I've enjoyed the most about the fan club is getting the chance to meet people from all over the world. 
And uh, so to, to actually be able to see faces and hear voices um, from people that I might have only read um, on the screen, this is great. You know, I, mm -hmm. I love this. So, yeah. And, and like I said, for, I know I recognize your name for years. So it's nice to see you and hear yes, you. Yes, it's true. Yeah. I've, uh, well, 2019 was the uh, 10th anniversary of my first Mika show. Um, it's been only 21 so far, but that's because I have a valid excuse. I became a mom. I have a four-year-old boy. So. <laughs> that is a very good excuse. There will be, yes. There will be more, hopefully. Oh, there will be. He will, yes, he, will, will. he will join me when he gets older. He knows Mika already, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yes, I'm just stuck at home here. I'm doing some uh, crocheting. Oh, nice. <laughs> this, will be, nice. this will be a table runner if I manage to finish that. And uh, well, that's it. It's it's all good. It's good. It's good. I'm getting used to it, and I hope everyone else uh, stays healthy and just calm. We are and all we trying just, our hardest, right? To we just have safe. to wait and see what happens. We have no influence on how long it's going to take. Well, we can we can stay at home. So yes. this is the only thing we can do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So well, thank you so much for chatting thank with me. You. Thank great. you. Thank you so much, Deb. <laughs> thank right. you very much. I good really appreciate you. it. Have All a right, great bye -bye. day. Bye. bye. Okay. Let's see here. I don't know what time it is, so I want to, I don't want to go over the hour and then get stuck. Okay, we've got a few more minutes, I guess. We'll try one more person. Oh, let's see here. This is not, you know, I hit the thing I'm supposed to hit and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I don't know if this is an Instagram glitch. See, look, that's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to see all my junk there. And I can't turn it around. I'm sorry, I can't seem to bring anybody else in because this is not working. Hmm. It's not working. I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I'll just sit and talk to you for another few minutes. It's just not, it's not doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, see, it keeps doing that, and it's not supposed to. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyway, Deb, you can answer some of the questions we asked you on Mika Fan Club. The, the questions you asked me personally, Karen, I... Um, Somebody asked me how I was coping with the um, being confined. And uh, like I said to Mika, I've got my husband around all the time, which is kind of different because I'm used to him being gone all the time. Um, so it is, it has been an adjustment. We have really had to find our own spaces and, and not spend too much time together <laughs> because it gets to be a little too much time, if you know what I mean. And um, I have been spending a lot of time looking at the wildlife out on my deck, um, the birds and uh, the squirrels. And it's gotten to the point where I'm giving the squirrels names, all of the squirrels. Like I have, uh, there's a squirrel that's got one eye, so I call him Blind Bart. And I've got a squirrel that's got a really skinny tail, so he's skinny tail. And pretty soon I'm going to start writing fan fiction about the squirrels, I think. I'm taking video and, and writing a story about them. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm coping. <laughs> I don't know if that's coping, but that's what I'm doing. Um, somebody says, oh, Kira. Yeah, hi, Kira. Did I used to live in Pittsburgh? Yes, I did. That's where I was born and raised, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, yes, I am from the U.S. and like I said, born in Pittsburgh. Now I live in the Washington DC area. Um, let's see, <laughs> blind Bart updates. Well, I haven't seen him for a few days. I'm actually starting to get worried. Um, like maybe, you know, he didn't see a hawk coming at him or something because he's blind in that one eye. Um, but uh, yeah, I have uh, been taking a lot of pictures of them and uh, of the birds, the different birds. And I have fox and chipmunks and raccoons. And um, so, yeah, getting back to nature. 
um, somebody asked, what is my favorite album? And I, it's always hard for me to pick a favorite. Um, it really depends on my mood. Um, so I, I, I can't really say. I really love the new album, which is, you know, I, I just love it. Um, so maybe that's my favorite right now anyway. Um, let's see. So, oh, and I, I used to sing when I was in, in school, but I don't think I have a good voice. So we are not going there. Um, let's see. Um, didn't see him for a few days. Yeah, Karen, you're right. You're right didn't see him for a few days and now I'm getting worried. That does remind me of something. <laughs> so, um, no, no, do, Saskia, do not start a Deb fan club that I, I'm getting actually worried that you guys are going to start making memes. I saw that, uh, somebody sort of made a little animation of me today and that was a little scary. Um, there's Wesley. Hello, Wesley. Karaoke. Yes. Well, maybe that'll be the next thing after um, uh, MFC's Got Talent. We'll do MFC karaoke. Uh, we'll figure out a way to do that. That would be pretty funny. Um, and maybe we can do a Zoom or something and get more than one or two people on at a time. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Iona. Hi, Iona. She asks about, she's been to my house and she's asked about our garden. It's doing well. Um, the weather's been kind of cool, so things aren't growing as fast, but yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, everybody likes the karaoke idea. Great. <laughs> what have we started? Um, a Zoom with Mika. Well, that, I don't know. We'll have to see if he would be interested in doing that. That's kind of extreme. Um, what am I going to eat today? Benedetta asks, are you asking me that? What am I going to eat today? I, you know, my husband's been cooking a lot. Last night he made calzones. He made the dough and then he made like a steak and onion filling. I, and so I'm going to just kind of let him keep doing that. Maybe he'll make something else good tonight. I don't know. I don't know what's going to be on the uh, menu tonight. Uh, why looks like an introvert's nightmare. What does? What does the funniest thing Ghislaine has asked? What is the funniest thing that happened during my Mika travels? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. There's been some funny things. I don't know. I think uh, I'll have to think about that and get back to you. Um, oops. What is Zoom? Nina, Zoom is like an, um, it's an app that you can chat with multiple people at one time. Um, so you could have, it depends um, on the type of account you have, but you could have, um, you know, up to, I don't know how many, 50 people on Zoom. Um, I have taken Pilates class with Zoom. Uh, so my Pilates instructor sets up the account and then she has, you know, various people and we can all see her and she can see us and tell us what we're doing wrong. Uh, my favorite outfit from all of Mika's performances. I, I really, I really love the polka dotted suit that he's been wearing. Um, that probably is my favorite. Um, Let's see, but Zoom is not safe. Well, I've been hearing things about it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think if if the data is stored, I think it's a problem, yeah. Um, Mika Fandom has a problem with privacy. We do? You'll have to tell me about that, I don't know. Okay, people are starting to drop off because it's dinner time, so I understand that. Um, so I just wanted to say it's nice that uh, we had a few minutes to chat afterward, but um, I'm glad you all could be here. And we will probably get um, that talk with Mika translated. 
uh, so people can understand what he was saying, because he did say some really um, nice, thoughtful things that I think everybody would be very interested in. Um, I do not know when the next uh, Instagram Live will be, probably next Wednesday. Um, if you have a preference as to time, let me know. Uh, we did it yesterday at 8 p.m. UK time, 9 p.m. Um, Central Europe time, I think. If that works for everybody, I'll keep it there. If you would rather have a different time, let me know. Leave me a message here on Instagram. And um, we will see you next week. I can't guarantee we will see Mika again next week, but um, we will try to uh, get him back here again. And um, I'll talk to you all really soon. Stay inside. Well, not inside necessarily, but stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. And uh, I'll talk to you all next week, if not sooner. Thanks. Bye.